Welcome to Avan Black's YouTube channel. I'm Steve, service technician for Avan Black. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put hard bags on a soft tail. So let's go over a couple of things real quick. We're kind of going to be talking about the deluxe and the heritage, the differences in the rear end. The heritage has a big dog bone style turn signal which blocks the, the uh, saddlebags from going on the bike. If you have a deluxe and you have the bullet blinker style system that's really small on the back of the bike, you'll be able to mount these without any problem. You're just going to mount your hard bag rail that we've got over here and then mount your bags. So if you have a deluxe and you've already got this small tail light system on the rear of the bike, you should be able to just skip forward in this video till you get to the part where we put the rails on and then we mount the saddlebags. But if you have a heritage like this, I'm going to show you today how to change your rear turn signal assembly and also get it wired up and then get your bags on. Now on the back of some of these soft tails, you're gonna have this big dog bone like they came on the Heritage. If you put this up here, we've got the saddlebag rail over here. We set the saddlebags on, it comes in contact with the back of the lights. So what we've done is just simply remove the two bolts out of the rear of this, pull the turn signals out. This feeds up under, comes in and plugs in right here. You just simply unplug these and then pull this off of the bike. And I've already done that to save ourselves a little bit of time today. Now you can purchase this small turn signal style bar from Advan Black, and it's only gonna come bare wired like this. And as you can see, we've got clips and pins in here. So I'm going to show you today how to wire this up. Now this tail light system will come with run, brake and turn signal, but on the soft tail, we have a center brake light that acts as a run and brake. So the only thing we need to hook up is the turn signals. These will only come on when you hit the turn signal. So in order to hook up the tail lights, we only need two wires. We need a ground and then we need a turn so we can eliminate the brake and the run. These will be the two that we're gonna put in the connector and then repin right here. So in order to hook up the new light, we'll need to get some new pins. This is part number 73191-96. And I'll show you the tool to put those on here in just a second. But the first thing we need to do is get these little plastic caps off and make it look like this. If you flip this little guy over right here on the back side, you can take a flathead screwdriver and kind of poke it up in here and give this a little twist. You're going to release this back cap that kind of holds this in. So you just kind of go back and forth until you get this popped up. Once you get that little piece right there popped up. So if you look at this side, we want to go where the clip is, where the pinch clip is. We want to go to that. It's going to go to the top. And we're going to go right in above that with our flathead. And this can take a couple of tries, but you're going to slide this in and you're going to lift up on that little tab. Once you feel it, and then you can pull this wire out. And we're going to do it on the other side. You just want to be very gentle with this. We're going to slide the screwdriver in until it stops. And then we're just going to lift up a little bit. There, my screwdriver just came off. You could hear it click. So you're going to lift up on that and then pull that right out. It's very simple. Now, if you find yourself having to crimp these onto new wires, you are going to want to get a set of these crimper tools. You can look at these and assume that you could probably get those pinched on with a pair of needle nose or a pair of pliers you can it's very hard to get them tight so if you have a pair of these little pliers it's going to come in handy pick these up on amazon and i'll put a link in the description down below so the first thing we're going to do is pull the red and white out of the way that's the break in the run that leaves us with a green and a black on this green one we're just going to strip back about an inch we're going to do that on both i'm going to take one of these terminals I'm going to give this a little twist here and actually bend it over just to make it a little thicker. I'm going to take one of these and slide the wire up into the prong. I'm going to take our crimping tool, crimp this on. I'm going to move down to the base one. We started at the top one. We're going to move down to the base one. I'm going to pull that one in just a little bit. Go over to the step two. We're gonna crimp that one down. Now, just in case you've depend your other one, you've walked back over to the bike and you've thought, oh, well, I don't know which one is ground and which one is the blinker to put it into the clip. So we're just gonna take a cheap test light like this. You pick these up for about five bucks. You're gonna ground it. I've got that one ran straight to the battery. We're gonna kick the bike on. We're gonna hit the left turn signal. We're gonna come back here. We've got this light grounded to the battery. It's long enough to just reach back here. We're gonna hit the first terminal on the left-hand side. We've got nothing. The blinker is on, so that's going to blink if it's hot. We're gonna put it on the second pin. As you can see, the light is blinking. So the inside pin, that is our blinker. 
and you need to do that on both sides of the bike. So what we need to do first is orientate which way our clip goes in. You got the little push down prong at the top and that goes in just like that. You can see the hole at the top where that clips in. So you wanna make sure that you have it and you hold it in the right direction. We know that the outside pin is black. So we're gonna slide that in. We're gonna listen for that to click. We're gonna take the green one. That one goes to the inside. We're going to slide that in until we hear it click. And then on the back side, we wanna make sure that we lock that plastic cap back down because that's what holds it into place. And then we can walk it up here to the bike and plug it in push it until we hear it click because we did not hook up the run and brake because we don't need it with a rear turn signal that will just go off until it's used as a turn signal and now that we have the rear turn signals changed out and like i said if you already have the turn signals like that your saddlebags will fit but if you have the big dog bone you need to change those out the first thing we're going to do is remove our docking hardware once again if you don't have docking hardware and you just have the bolts in here go ahead and remove those two bolts just know that on the back side of this there's a metal plate that goes from here to here. So you may want to put your hand up in there and hold it. It's okay if it falls out, you can just tuck it back up in there and stick it back in. So the next step is to remove the rear foot peg. We need to take the C-clip off here. We need to push the pin out, remove the peg. Right behind here, you've got a bolt that goes in here. Now from there, we're gonna take our saddlebag rail. We're gonna put it right up here. We're gonna put our mounting bolt through here. Now this one, we have to remember that plate's back there. So it's kind of hard to hang on to this, get this threaded. We're gonna take our foot peg, put it through the saddlebag bracket, get it lined back up with the hole. Gonna run it in. Tighten these two down. And that's pretty much all it takes to install the saddlebag rail. Inside the hardware kit, you're going to have two of these little clips like this. These are gonna go right here and they are adjustable once you put the bolt in to move them around to adjust them to where the bag bolts go in. We're gonna take our bolt, run it through the bracket, run it through the bag rail, put a washer on the back side get our nylock nut started. Same thing back here. So from here, we're just gonna sneak a 10 millimeter behind there. Get this tightened down, but not tightened down all the way because we still have to adjust it when we set our bags on. Now we have these installed, but we leave them loose so we can adjust them for the bags. We're gonna take our saddle bag and set it on the rail. We're gonna flip our bracket up. Put our bagger knob through. Get our rear one started just to hold it in place. So from here, I'll sneak our wrenches back down in here and get these brackets tightened up. And then every time you take your saddlebag off, the brackets are in the place where they need to be. And that, my friends, is all there is to it, to putting hard bags on your soft tail. And you can see here at the end result, how we've taken this soft tail and we've put quite a bit of bagger parts on there. We do have the soft tail crash bar with the color match lower fairings. We do have the soft tail tour pack mount with a king size tour pack on there and you can fit any size tour pack. This is the one that I had in Amber Whiskey from the Rogue Wide. That's a king size with a wrap around. You can do the chopped or the razor as well. And then in this video, we did the saddlebag rails and the color match saddlebags with lids off of a 2014 up touring model. With all that combined, you have the complete touring model setup on your soft tail. If you have any questions on this, please drop it in the comment section down below and I'll help you the best as I can. If you need to get a hold of me Monday through Friday, Friday, jump on over to the website, go to the contact information, find a service tech phone number, give me a call, and I will help you there. I'm going to get out of here and get back to work. I hope to see you in the next video, but until then, as always, be safe, keep your knees in the breeze.